One of the new features I was most excited about in the iPhone 16 was the upgrade of the 30 millimeter camera from 12 megapixels to 48 megapixels. But while this was great news for photographers, I didn't expect it to turn out to be bad news for filmmakers. We were all expecting the same high quality we got from the other 48 megapixel on the 24 millimeter camera. But what I saw was not only worse than the 24 millimeter, but it was even worse than the 30 millimeter and the iPhone 15. So is this really a 48 megapixel camera or was Apple misleading or just lying to us? In this episode, I'll show you with real proof and examples how the 30 millimeters actually got worse in the iPhone 16 and prove to you why you should always take these marketing claims with a massive grain of salt. <laughs> Before I begin, I want to warn you that at some point, this episode will get a bit technical. I know some of you might not like it, but this is necessary to truly understand the performance and limitations of all new cameras before we use them. So if you're not into this nerdy side of filmmaking, then you can just stop here and just trust me when I say, in video mode, the 48 megapixels ultra wide camera on the iPhone 16 is actually worse than the 12 megapixels ultra wide in the iPhone 15. But you'll miss out on the details of how much worse it really is. With that out of the way, let's dive in. So Apple got us all hooked when they said this about the new 13 millimeter camera in their photography segment of the keynote. So we are introducing a new 48 megapixel ultra wide camera. It has a new quad pixel sensor for high resolution shots with autofocus. So the magic words here are quad pixel sensor and high resolution shots. I'll talk about the quad pixel sensor later in the video and give you my take on it, since we have a lot of rumors floating around that might need some clarifications. But let's start with what's important, the high resolution shots. So I went ahead and took a couple of photos in RAW Max and confirmed that this was a 48.7 megapixel sensor to be exact. But that's all in photo mode. What about video mode? How come their keynote didn't mention anything about how this massive resolution bump could potentially affect video quality? Not even on their website. The only video improvement they mentioned was about the 120 frames, which is exclusive to the 24 millimeter camera, by the way. And when they mentioned the 48 megapixels on the 13 millimeters, once again, it was about photos. Well, there's a very good reason why they never mentioned it. You'll see for yourself why in a minute. But let me remind you first that the 24 millimeter lens on the iPhone 15 was the best performing lens of them all. One of the main reasons is that it was the only camera with a 48 megapixel sensor, also known as 8K. This meant that it can deliver oversampled 4K video from that 8K resolution that's higher in quality than the ones from native 4K sensors. So it's not unreasonable to expect the new 48 megapixel sensor on the 13 millimeter to have a similar performance. So I started with a couple of casual tests to compare the 13 millimeters on both phones. I don't recommend watching this on your phone. Try to watch it at 4K on a bigger screen to see the details I'll be talking about. Also note that I shot all these tests you're about to watch using the Blackmagic camera app, which gave me all the controls I needed to conduct these tests in a fair and consistent way. So if I toggle between them, the only difference I can see is that the iPhone 16 is a bit warmer than the 15. Hold that thought for later. I shot at a low ISO of 40 to make sure the details won't be affected by any potential noise. When zoomed in, I was surprised I didn't see any detailed difference between both. I'll let you guess which is which. It doesn't matter how zoomed in I get, and I bet you couldn't definitively guess which one is the iPhone 16. So I tested in a more controlled environment and bumped the ISO to 200 this time. And that's when some warning signs started to appear on the iPhone 16. You can see once again they both look identical. But if we zoom in a little bit, not sure if YouTube's compression is destroying this, but the iPhone 16 looks a tiny bit sharper than the 15. But I have a feeling it's just post sharpening that's added during the image processing on the phone. Also, did you notice this yellowish color fringing at the brightest part of the rings? While the iPhone 15 looks pretty clean without any fringing. Looking at another part of the image, you can see how the iPhone 16 has the same blotchy color fringing in the detail around the words made at, while the 15 looks cleaner with smoother and more accurate details than the 16. Now at ISO 800, things get a little more interesting and worse for the iPhone 16. First thing I noticed when I toggled between them is how the iPhone 16 overall color is cooler than the iPhone 15, not warmer like what we saw earlier in the first outdoors example. Forget about that. Check when we get closer. The first thing that jumped to your eyes is the sheer amount of purple fringing that turned the whole thing purple. I mean, it can't get worse than that when resolving fine patterns and details. While the iPhone 15 has higher color fidelity, looking closer to how an actual $20 bill looks like, also here, the 15 has a lot cleaner details where you can almost see the individual ring details in the shadow area. And the highlights are also nice and clean with uniform color. While the iPhone 16 is raising more red flags, the ring details in the shadow area are completely dissolved in a blotchy dark patch. And everything else is plagued by that yellowish fringing in the highlights, 
and purple fringing in the mid-tones, especially around high contrast areas. Remember, that's an 8K sensor, so I thought to bring another higher-end 8K sensor just for reference to see which one is closer to the real deal. This is the DJI Ronin 4D 8K shooting under the same exact settings and conditions, and just like the iPhone 16, it's oversampling the 8K image into a ProRes 4K file, while the iPhone 15 is shooting natively at 4K. You can obviously see the massive quality difference we have here on the Ronin. The image looks super sharp and clean, and you can see every little detail in the rings. Again, I'm only using it as the benchmark of what a proper cinema level 8K sensor would produce on a 13mm lens. By all means, I'm not expecting the $1200 phone to deliver the $7000 result we get from the Ronin, but I was also not expecting to see that the 12 megapixel sensor from the older iPhone 15 to look closer to the 8K sensor from 4D than the iPhone 16, especially at the very common ISO level of 800. Moving on to ISO 1600, that's when the iPhone 16 started suffering badly from excessive noise and broke apart even at full screen without trying to zoom in or to pixel peep. Again, I'm reminding you to play this on a 4K screen, not on your phone. You can see the details are getting softer and shadows suffer from a purple noise sandstorm. Here's the iPhone 15. It's also struggling, but doing a much better job than the iPhone 16. Let me toggle between them to see what I mean. A very useful trick you can use to gauge the amount of noise between images is to isolate the blue channel. The smoother the image is, the less noise it has. And it's obvious which one has a noisier party going on here. The 15 retained more details in the shadow areas, and it has very manageable monochromatic noise in the background. While the iPhone 16 has more crushed shadows, details of the focus ring on the lens are lost, for example. Again, this is ISO 1600, something we use quite often, so it's really disappointing to see it suffer like that. To be fair, I thought let's just forget the iPhone 15 for a moment and just compare the 13mm 8K camera on the iPhone 16 to the 24mm 8K on the same phone. Of course the optical distortion is different, but I tried to match the composition as much as possible. You can see how the 24mm camera is just on another level, zooming in on some details. I mean, do I even need to say anything other than wonder how both these cameras are from the same phone, shooting at the same exact conditions with the same exact settings? And don't forget, they're both 48 megapixels. This is the kind of inconsistency that could ruin your shoot if you thought you'll be getting consistent results from all three cameras on your phone. Just for fun, let's bring back the iPhone 15 in this mix. Don't you feel the 15 looks more consistent with the 24 millimeters on the 16? Yes, it's a bit noisy, but manageable. Again, we're talking about ISO 1600 here. We didn't reach 3200 yet, where it turns into a very colorful noise party you'll see in a second. Even after denoising, Whatever is left in the iPhone 16 shows signs of eroded details from the harsh noise. And even though the 15 doesn't look good either, but it surely looks better than the 16, and it retains some details that managed to survive its noise. Here's ISO 3200 on the iPhone 16, and that's the iPhone 15. Both are suffering pretty bad, but it's clear the iPhone 16 purple noise sandstorm in the background is worse than the 15. Zooming in, it's clear they're both in desperate need of some denoising. And when denoised, I can see the iPhone 15 retained a bit more details over the 16, and the overall look is definitely better. The mid-tones survived, and it has a better light roll-off than the more contrasty look on the 16. With all that said, let's go back to the 13 and 24 millimeters on the iPhone 16. How come both 48 megapixel cameras on the same phone deliver such a massive quality difference? Apple called it a quad pixel sensor. And you probably heard theories about how it's actually a 12 megapixel sensor that splits each pixel into four subpixels, resulting in a 48 megapixels resolution. Many people asked my opinion on this, and honestly, all I care about is the result. Apple are super secretive about their technology as we all know, and whatever you hear from anyone won't be anything more than an educated guess at best. But if you insist, all I heard is that it's rumored that the iPhone is using the IMX903 sensor from Sony. And this quad pixel thing they're talking about sounds like what Sony described on their website as quad Bayer structure, which they didn't describe as splitting a pixel into four subpixels, but rather four adjacent pixels are clustered with the same color filters. So this means it is in fact a 48 megapixel sensor, no splitting happening in any pixels here. And then they went on and explained that this will prevent resolution loss in a low illuminance environment and produce low noise photos. If that's their intention, then I'm afraid that it failed miserably. Once again, none of this matters. All we care about is the result, and the result does not look good. There's no improvement whatsoever over the iPhone 15. On the contrary, the brand new 48 megapixels 13 mm camera on the iPhone 16 is actually worse than the 12 megapixels counterpart in the iPhone 15. So to be fair, Apple didn't lie to us. They never said anything about improvement in the video quality on the 13mm camera. 
All they said was about photos, which was tested and confirmed by Tony Northrop in this video. So next time, you shouldn't only listen to what Apple says, but most of all, listen to what it doesn't say. In this case, it was new 48 megapixel camera with worse video performance than before. Hope you liked this episode. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.